Good morning, saints. Good morning, congregation. Good morning, online congregation. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Anybody out there who will be watching this broadcast or the archives, good morning to you. A godly good morning. I am Curtis Alexander, senior pastor and founder of the City of Refuge Church in Nashville, Tennessee. Mount Juliet, Tennessee, actually. Praise the Lord. This morning, saints, we're going to come to you early, uh, but we have a great message that the Lord has been imposing on my spirit and my heart this week. So we're talking about where is your faith overcoming life's disappointments and difficulties? Where is your faith overcoming life's disappointments and difficulties? Father God, and we come boldly before your throne of grace this morning to say thank you, to worship you, to honor you, to praise you. Lord God, we just thank you for the time that we've gathered and assembled. Sit with, sit with us now and become our holy guest as this time does become divine. In the mighty and precious name of Jesus, we all can say amen and amen and amen. Saints, this morning in the message today, I want to talk to you about having the faith that is necessary to become an overcomer in all of life's situations. So that you don't find yourself becoming so weary that you begin to lose heart and the faith that God has breathed into you. Illustration this morning, saints, is uh, talking about hard-nosed Harry, and the rain falls on the just and the unjust. Disappointments and difficulties are a part of life, you see. Luke, the book of Luke, the 8th chapter, the 22nd verse through the 25th. So Luke 8, 22 through 25. And saints, this morning I'm reading from the Amplified Bible version. So you better can understand what we're talking about. So Luke chapter 8, verse 22 through 25, it reads as follows in the Amplified. Yours might be a little bit different. Now on, now on one of those days, Jesus and his disciples got into a boat. And he said to them, let us cross over to the other side of the lake, the Sea of Galilee. See? So they set out, and verse 23 says, but as they were sailing, Jesus fell asleep. And a fierce gale of wind swept down as if through a wind tunnel mm -hmm, on the lake, and, and they began to be swamped and were in great danger. Verse 24 says, they came to Jesus and woke him up saying, Master, Master, we are about to die, mm, the disciples. He got up and rebuked the wind and, and the raging violent waves, and, and they ceased, and it became calm, a perfect peacefulness, you see. In verse 25, it talks about, and he said to them, where is your faith, your confidence in him, in me, it says. They were afraid and astonished and saying to one another, who then is this that he commands even the winds and the sea and they obey him? You see, you see, saints, in, in this situation, Jesus was demonstrating to his disciples that he had power and authority over every situation in life. My God, we thank you and we praise you. If we are to put our faith in, and trust in Jesus, He would be there no matter, he would be there for us no matter how difficult or distressing the situations we face seem to be. This is the question I want to ask you today, saints. Where is your faith in relationship to all that you are going through? Have you reached the point where you can't take it anymore? <coughs> Life situations that, that try our faith, saints. What kinds of situations and trials are, are trying your faith and seem insurmountable in your eyes? Mm. Talking about overcoming. Broken relationships. There's, these are the 
issues and problems and situations and trials that we face daily on a daily basis, broken relationships, busy lifestyles, divine delay in God's promises, you know, emotional problems, family problems, children, financial problems, God chastising and hardness of the way, and which is found in Numbers 21.4, and marital problems, sickness, health, or death. You see, he says these are, in each of these areas, we are susceptible to disappointment, difficulty, and heartache. All those things we just, we just read about. Broken relationships, financial problems, sickness, health, death. You know, where's your faith in each of these areas? You're going to have God kind of faith. Jesus has given us authority and power over all the issues of life. We talked about that in the weeks prior. <clears throat> he wants us, saints, to be overcomers in all that we do and comes our way. We've got to have the God kind of faith. John 16, 33 says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. In the world you have tribulation and distress and suffering. There it is again. We have tribulation. We have distress. We have suffering. But be courageous. Be confident. Be undaunted. Be filled with joy. I, Jesus, has overcome the world. My God, we're going to read that again. But be courageous, my Lord. Be confident. Be undaunted. Be filled with joy. I have overcome the world. My conquest is accomplished. My victory abided. Mm, my God, what an awesome verse in scripture for today's time, saints. The problem is that we, we have an enemy who wants to exploit the areas in our lives that are causing us heartache, disappointments, and difficulty. His objective, saints, as we talked about previous weeks, is to make us weary and lose heart. You know, we always quote and say that he always comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. That's his job. And he does it very well. He doesn't need help from you. See, he says we need to realize that we have an enemy as, a, as an objective. We, 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 we know that he is out to kill. We just, we just said it. To steal and to destroy. But he is also trying to wear us out and promote fear. <laughs> Daniel 7, 25 says, He will speak words against the Most High. We're talking about Satan himself. He will speak words against the Most High. And wear down the saints of the Most High, and will, and He will intend to change the times and the law, which He has done. Not going into all that this morning, but let's read that again. Daniel chapter seven, verse twenty-five says, "He will speak words against the Most High God, and wear down the saints." Of the Most High, and we and He will intend to change the times and the law, and they will be given into His hand for a time, two times and a half a time, three and one half years, which is saying He will have He only has a short period of time to do this. It will be done. Has it not been done? Has the times not changed? Has the laws not changed? Not going into all that this morning, but, but, but this is Satan's objective. And it will be fulfilled because it's prophecy. Jesus, he would talk about it. See, says we got to read more, we got to be more in tune with the Lord. We got to read our Bible. Satan's objective, saints, is to wear us down. The scripture is speaking of, of the Antichrist, which will be released in the earth in the last days prior to Christ's coming. But it's important, saints, to know that the spirit of the Antichrist is already loose and working towards these same object objectives. 
The Antichrist spirit is, 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 uh, that is loose in the world today is trying to wear God's precious saints out with discouragement in the midst of various trials and hardships of life. Saints, there is so much death, there's so much suicide, there's so much boggling us down. We're discouraged. Suicide has been up. Broken marriages, broken homes, financial problems, various trials and hardships. His objective, saints, is, is to begin to plant the seeds of apostasy so that when the time comes, we will not have any faith to draw upon. Spread lies. Apostasy. His objective is to get as many saints as possible to lose heart and faith, which will lead to apostasy. He wants to take as many down with him as he possibly can, saints. This is talking about Satan's objective. The Bible tells us we are not to be ignorant of his devices. We read it and talked about it in the previous weeks. Listen to the uh, archives. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. To keep Satan from taking advantage of us for... We are not ignorant of his schemes. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. That's from the Amplified. Satan, Satan feeds on our vulnerabilities. You see, Luke 4, 13. Luke chapter 4, 13 says, When the devil had finished every temptation, talking about he was tempting Jesus, he temporarily left him until a more opportune time. Because Jesus kept giving him, reciprocating the word back to him. He attempted him every, every temptation. Every temptation. He left him. Because he knew there was going to be another, it, there was a more opportune time coming. We all know what happened. Saints, we know that Satan feeds on our weaknesses and delights in exploiting our vulnerable points. So let's look at these areas once, <coughs> once again that have the potential of bringing weariness to our lives. These are all common causes of discouragement that makes us wary in well-doing. Broken relationships. Divine delay in God's promises. <laughs> emotional problems. Family problems, children, etc. Financial problems. My God, that hits a lot of us. Guys chastise. Mm -hmm. Marital problems. Hardness of the other way. Sickness, health, and death. You see, do you feel in jeopardy in, either, in any of these areas this morning? Are you about to perish with the water raging over your head? Are you about ready to drown in your sorrows because of the discouragement or disappointments you are feeling in any of these areas? You must identify the area where, where you are vulnerable and use the shield of faith and the breath, the belt of truth against it. So you say this firing his fiery dart, so you better get your shield up to protect yourself. Saints, we always quote and talk about uh, Ephesians chapter 6 verses 13 through 16 therefore put on the complete armor of God and, so that you will be able to successfully resist and stand your ground in the evil day of danger and having done everything that the Christ crisis demands to stand firm in your place fully prepared unmovable and victorious Verse 14 says, so stand firm and, and hold your ground, having tightened the wide band of truth, personal integrity, moral courage around your waist, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, my God, and up, an upright heart, and having strapped on your feet the gospel of peace and preparation, to face the enemy with firm-footed stability 
and the readiness produced by the good news. <clears throat> Saints verse 16 says, Above all, lift up the protective shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows, I'm sorry, all the flaming arrows of the evil one. You see, we got to put on the full armor of God. That's what it takes. See, we don't need to be always in communication with the enemy. We just need to pray. We need to put on the full armor of God. So we can overcome. How to apply the shield of faith, saints. Now that we understand that we have a vicious, a vicious and unrelenting enemy who is out to get us and to wear us down. What are some practical ways in which we can apply the shield of faith against him, Pastor? Well, number one, God's desire for us, God's desire for our lives is take is to take us from tribulation to victory. God's desire for our lives is to take us from tribulation to victory. You see, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 says, For everyone born of God is victorious and overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has conquered and overcome the world. Our continuing persistent faith in Jesus, the Son of God, the Word, the world, our faith. Point number one, we have to understand where the source of our faith is at. Understand where the source of your faith is at. <clears throat> Hebrews 12, 2 talks about that. Looking away from all that will distract us and focusing our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of faith, the first incentive for our belief and the one who brings our faith to maturity who for the joy of accomplishing the goal set before him endured the cross, disregarding the shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, revealing his deity, his authority, and the completion of his work. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. See, saints, the source of our faith is, is in Christ Jesus and, and what he has done for us. He is the author and finisher of our faith and, and will always be on our side no matter what. <clears throat> Many times in the midst of life's hardship, the accuser of the brethren comes and comes to, to, to us and tries to convince us that we are unworthy of God's help in our lives. This is a lie, saints, to prevent us from receiving any help we really need. You've got to know that God, if God be for you, who can be against you? If God be for you, who can be against you? No weapon formed against you shall prosper. This must be your, heaven, your heart, this must be in your heart, very strong. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. My God. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 through 2 says, But, but now, this is what the, the Lord, your creator, says. O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you from captivity. I have called you by name. You are mine. Verse 2 says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you would not be scorched, nor will the flame burn you. Uh, in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, it says, But those who wait for the Lord, who expect, look for, and hope in him, will gain new strength and renew their power. They will lift up their wings and rise up close to God like eagles rising toward the sun. They will run and not become weary they will walk and not grow tired. Can you say amen, saints? Ah, uh, yeah. Where is your faith? Overcoming life's difficulties. There were many biblical Bible characters for, 
which for one reason or another became weary and despondent over their situations in life, but in the end became overcomers. Because they knew where their faith was, saints. That's the question today. Where is your faith? Moses pleaded for God to kill him on one occasion. And when the people of Israel began to complain about eating manna all the time, Moses, Moses basically said, if this is the way it's going to be, please kill me here and now, for the burden is too heavy to carry. Numbers 11, uh, 11 chapter, I'm sorry, chapter 11, verses 11 through 15. Moses' preservation, pers yeah, preservation was in fact, was in the fact that he was taking his, this burden to the source of his faith, saints. And Joshua, the great conqueror who was, uh, was so despondent and depressed at one point that he was ready to quit and give up the, and wished he was back in the wilderness where there weren't so many, weren't so many en enemies. But he took his burden to the source of his faith and was told what to do and how to overcome. Joshua chapter 7 verse 7 says, we must do the same thing. Take our cares to the Lord. We not only have the shield of faith to protect us from Satan's fiery dark, uh, Satan's fiery dark saints, but we have also the belt of truth and the sword of the spirit to apply to our spiritual arsenal. Psalms 11, uh, 119, verse 24 to 25 says, Your testimonies are uh, also are my delight and my counselors. My earthly life clings to the dust. Revive and refresh me according to your word. Everyone is susceptible to the various situations that try our faith, saints. None of us is exempt. But we can't extend the misery of the situation in our lives when we don't apply the word of God to the situation. You see, on the other hand, when the word of God is applied, it will, it will not only revive our spirits, but it will begin to make the crooked path straight once again. We must take the word of God and apply it to the situation that is bringing distress in our lives, no matter how weak or lethargic we feel. You understand, saints? We take the word of God. Romans 10, 17 says, So faith comes from hearing what is told and what is heard comes by the preaching of the message concerning Christ. See, Job understood uh, that's Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Job understood the importance of being revived according to the word. He probably experienced as much hardship and disappointment as anyone, and his testimony was that, was that he esteemed God's word more valuable than food itself. Job 23, 11, verses, verses 11 to 12. Job 23, verses 11 to 12. My feet have carefully followed his steps. I have kept his ways and not turned aside. Verse 12, I have not departed from the commandment of his lips. I have kept the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Point number three, saints, we must find God's purpose and build kingdom character. Find God's purpose in our lives and build kingdom character. Romans 8, 28, Saints says, And we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, causes all things to work together as a plan for good, for those who love God, to those who are called according to his plan and purpose. Saints, all of the areas mentioned in this message, plus others, represent opportunities for God's purpose to come forth in our lives in a greater decree, degree. They represent an opportunities to build godly character in our lives. When we approach these situations with a kingdom mentality and a heart of faith, God is able to be released to bring forth joy in the midst of difficulty. The joy of the Lord is our strength, which counteracts Satan's tactic of wearing us down. Saints Romans 5, chapter 5, verses 3 to 4 says, And not only this, but with joy, let us exalt. 
in our sufferings and rejoice in our hardships, knowing that hardship, distress, pressure, trouble produces patience, endurance. And endurance, verse 4 says, and, and endurance, proven character, maturity, and proven character and hope and confidence, assurance of eternal salvation. What are some virtues that God wants to develop in, in our lives in the midst of these trying situations? Broken relationships, forgiveness, busy lifestyle priorities, financial problems, principle of giving and putting the kingdom first, etc. <clears throat> James 1, verse, chapter 1, verses 2 through 4 says, Consider it nothing but joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you fall into various trials, be assured that the testing of your faith through experience produces endurance leading to spiritual maturity and inner peace. Count, consider it nothing but joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you fall into various trials. Count it all joy. And let endurance, chapter, uh, verse 4, and let endurance have its perfect result and do a thorough work so that you may be perfect and completely developed in your faith, lacking in nothing. My God. James chapter 1 verses 2 through 4. Psalms 138 7 through 8 says, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will receive me. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand will save me. The Lord will accomplish that which concerns me, your unwavering loving kindness. O Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your own hands. See, saints, we must find Contentment in the, in the adversity, in the adversity, in the adversity of Jesus. Philippians 4, chapter, uh, chapter 4, verses 11 through 13. Now that I speak from, not that I speak from any personal need, for, that, for I have learned to be content and self-sufficient through Christ, satisfied to the point where I am not disturbed or uneasy, regardless of my circumstances. Verse 12 says, for I know, it says, I know how to get along and live humbly in difficult times. And I to enjoy abundance and live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing life. Whether well-fed or going hungry. Whether having an abundance or being in need. Verse 13, I can do all things. What he has called me to do through Christ, through him, who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purpose, I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses me with inner strength and confidence, peace. When we are able to find contentment, the shield of faith not only causes the enemy to leave us alone, but it further releases God's hand of provision in the midst of trial, saints. Philippians 4, 9, 10 says this, The things which you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things in daily life. And the God, who is the source of peace and well-being, will be with you. Says my concluding remarks and closing remarks and Things, I want to leave you with this. These are some basic steps to overcoming life's disappointments and difficulties of which you will surely experience from time to time. If you allow God to work his purpose in your life by going to him and his word during a time of difficulty, you will find yourself in a place of contentment and as a result, you will be the kind of overcomer God has destined you to be. And you will have defeated Satan's attempt to wear you down. So let me ask you once again. We've heard the message this morning. Where is your faith in relationship to all of life's difficulties? Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Read it on your own time. Revelation chapter 2, verse 7. You can read that on your own time as well. But saints, where is your faith? Where is your faith? 
You've heard the message today. We've got to overcome. We've got to put on the full armor of God. So that we can overcome the enemy. Amen. So Father God, we thank you for this time we've gathered and assembled here. And for the people that are watching and listening, or will be watching and listening. Father God, we pray a special blessing be bestowed upon them. Lord, you know our hearts. You know what we're facing, what we're going through. Father God, we pray for divine healing, but we confess every sin that we have committed before we come to this table, to take Holy Communion this morning. So Father God, we repent, we, we cleanse our hearts, cleanse our minds, Lord God. We ask these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Saints, if you have never accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you need to do that right now. You need to become saved. You need to have a personal relationship with him. And my second plea, if you're looking for a church home and you've been searching, we, we have a great group of men and women of God here at the City of Refuge Church. And if you need prayer, you can... Um, We'll be here to pray with you and agree with you. So, if you go to our website, <clears throat> if you want to join up with the city of the ministry, City of Refuge Church, www.tcorc-tn.weeksite.com forward slash website. It will be in the comment section. If the Lord lays it upon your heart to give, we all have to be giving somewhere. Bring your you know, first fruits into the storehouse. That's on there too. That's on our website as well. We're not here to beg. We're not here to plead. We're not here to do all of that. It's a, you know, read the word. We ought to you know, bring tithes into the storehouse. Wherever that might, wherever that might be for you. It may not be the city of Refuge Church. But if it is, we employ you to do, to do that. You can give online on our website. There's lots of ways to give. Go to our website again, www.tcorc-tn.com forward slash website. And click on the give in the more section. There's a give button. There's text to give. There's all these other uh, platforms to give as well. We don't want to leave anybody out. Amen, Saints. So we'll be with you live and in person next week. It is Communion Sunday. <clears throat> um, you know, let God search your heart. Rob us from anything that is not of him. So we can come to the table clean with a humbled heart. Amen. So we thank God for you participating this morning, watching. We love you. God loves you more. We'll be with you live and in person next Sunday, if it be the Lord's will. Like I said, it's this first Sunday. We will, for the people in the congregation, we will take uh, communion. And if you want to be a part of that, you join up with us. We, we do it every first Sunday here at the City of Refuge Church. But we just love the Lord. We love God's people as well. But you know, God loves you more than ever. You can't. There's nothing you can do to have him separate that love he has for you because he created you. Amen. So be a blessing with somebody this week and love on somebody and have an awesome and blessed week until we meet again god bless you god keep you make it a great day be blessed <laughs>